Hello everyone, welcome back to Whirlwind Radio. This is Marcelo Sugdeo. We have been hit by a wave of data breaches of recent. Should we keep trusting companies with our personal data? I will talk more about that. And the Facebook fiasco. It's not about security. It's a privacy breach that could spell the doom of the social media giant. A few days ago, three Canadian locations of department store, Saks, were exposed to data breach. And this was revealed by Saks' parent company, Hudson's Bay. And as is the case with most data breaches, the company hacked normally release a little as possible information about the breach itself. And in some cases, they hold off until the last minute, like Equifax and Yahoo did. In this case, Hudson's Bay, like the rest, just gave us a little amount of imp- information about the breach. But Gemini Advisory, a cybersecurity company, said it had analyzed the available data and found information from 5 million credit cards that had been compromised. Gemini said that in a report that the information was stolen from 83 Saks Fifth Avenue or Saks Off Fifth stores and also from all locations of Lord and Taylor a department store chain owned by Hudson's Bay. The firm found that three Canadian Saks locations, all in Ontario, were exposed to the breach. That's the one at Sherway Gardens in Toronto, Bramley City Centre in Brampton, and Pickering Town Centre. Hudson's Bay itself, at the time of recording this podcast, hasn't said anything uh, whether it's the Canadian locations were affected. But it says that investigation is ongoing Um, but there's no indication that the breach affected the company's digital platforms or Hudson's Bay itself and their home outfitters' stores. The cybersecurity firm analyzes stolen data appearing on the dark web. A week ago, the firm stated that it saw an influx of stolen credit card and debit card information being offered for sale on the dark web. And this, of course, raised a red flag for the cybersecurity firm. So they went ahead and analyzed the data and they were able to determine that shoppers at All Lord and Taylor and the certain uh, Saks locations were at risk of having their information stolen. The company said that on March 28th, they saw a significant spike of stolen credit cards offered for sale on one of the marketplaces. So they decided to look further into it. And guess what? there was an advertisement stating that more than 5 million credit and debit cards will be offered for sale. At that point, the firm decided to investigate. And they found that the hacking group called Joker Stash, which has been active in hacking retail and hospitality companies for the past three years, and based on their investigation, they found stolen data of 125,000 payment cards dating from as early as March 2017 and as late as March 2018. About 75% of the credit and debit cards appear to have been taken from Hudson's Bay-owned retailers. They notice also only certain Saks locations were affected because of the outlet was in the process of switching from the card swipe technology to the EMV chip technology. So here we see a cybersecurity firm is coming out with information regarding this breach, while the company that was breached is not saying anything much about a hack. And this is quite common. We have seen this in most of the cases where our personal information was breached. This is what I can't understand. In this day and age where accountability is a core value in many companies, why do we keep seeing cases where the affected companies are trying their best to keep data breaches under the cover when we have all the right to know about it? I don't know. Do they think that by keeping it under the wraps that we will not find out about it? It doesn't make sense. It's about loyalty and trust. We trust these companies and they should be loyal to us and to that trust to keep us in the loop. I know there there are cases where these companies were not even aware that they were breached. I understand that they cannot disclose a breach if they are not aware of it. 
But again, with what we have today, it seems so far-fetched that a company, uh, that a breach could happen in a company, and yet it cannot be discovered earlier. Now, just to continue with the story, Hudson's Bay said that they could be there could be fraudulent charges to customers' accounts because of this breach, but said that those customers wouldn't be liable to pay them. The company is asking clients to review their account statements to see if there have been any activity or transactions that they don't recognize and that they will then notify customers affected by the breach as quickly as possible and will offer free identity protection services once they learn more about the breach. Again, this is the standard response that we're seeing about data breaches. I think more should be done and companies that keep our data should be held responsible for any such breach. Regulations and other measures should be put in place by the government to help protect us. If you're a user of MyFitnessPal, this is a popular fitness tracking app that has been around for a while, then you'll need to go ahead and change your password. Yes there has been another massive data breach. Over 150 million MyFitnessPal accounts were compromised. The app started back in 2005 and has been used by those who are trying to monitor calorie intake as well as exercise. Under Armour, the company that owns MyFitnessPal quickly sent out notification to its users and once the breach was discovered, so they deserve some credit here for how they responded, unlike the other examples that we have seen over the last few years. In addition to notifying all my fitness poll users, the company has provided information about how users can protect their data and asking that all users to change their passwords. They are also working with law enforcement to investigate and monitor for suspicious activity and also exploring enhancements to help detect and prevent similar unauthorized access in the future. So those are all plus pluses for the, the company. One expert said that we will continue to see large-scale breaches of the applications and services we rely on until security and privacy become board-level priorities. He said that we need to think beyond the existing traditional view of security as yet another cost center and embrace next-generation security products that enable predictive prevention of attacks before they cause damage. Security needs to be a top priority at the board level. And this is not just uh, another cost. It is the lifeline that will keep the company operating. The emphasis must be on security. There are many security experts who share the same view, but yet... We keep seeing this lack of concern to make this a top priority. The good news for those affected is that the only data that was exposed or potentially compromised was usernames, email addresses, and encrypted passwords. More sensitive and potentially more harmful data like social security numbers or driver's license numbers are not collected by MyFitnessPal. My and the bank and credit card details are collected and processed separately. Mark Zuckerberg has responded to the current backlash that Facebook is getting regarding the way data was collected by Facebook and was used. The shortened version of what he said was, we have a responsibility to protect your data, and if we can't, then we don't deserve to serve you. No, that is not right. That's not the issue here. The Cambridge Analytica scandal is not about a failure to protect users' data. It is a failure to protect the privacy of users' data. So there is a difference there. So let me repeat. It's not about a failure to protect the users' data. It is a failure to protect the privacy of the users' data. Let's take a look at what really happened in this case. Cambridge University's Alexander Kogan developed a personality quiz Facebook app called This Is Your Digital Life. So he needed data, and lots of it, 
So he decided to use his private company called Global Science Research to run the surveys. He then contracted Cambridge Analytica, which provided funds to pay people to take the test. A total of 270,000 did so. The test takers agreed to let Kogan harvest data from their Facebook account. Through this, he was able to collect data about the quiz takers' Facebook friends, all 50 million of them. Only people who had opted out of this Facebook feature were protected from Kogan's data collection. And being able to do so was not easy. Facebook has since locked down this feature. Kogan said that he was collecting the information for academic research, but his company gave that data to Cambridge Analytica. Now, all of this occurred in 2014. According to Facebook, in 2015, the company became aware of the data sharing, which violated the terms of service under which Kogan had obtained that information of Facebook users. The company demanded that Cambridge Analytica delete the Facebook data in its files. Cambridge Analytica said it had complied, and for Facebook, that was the end of the story. But it wasn't the end of the story. Cambridge Analytica had not deleted the data. Instead, it used the information to conduct micro-targeting of U.S. voters during the 2016 presidential campaign. Facebook has failed its users in multiple ways. The core failure was and is excessive information sharing. And this was not a security breach. It was a conscious Facebook choice to encourage huge information sharing. And that comes at the expense of privacy. Kogan's obtaining personal data from those 50 million accounts was a major privacy breach, one that was enabled as a result of Facebook's core vision. Facebook also failed to conduct due diligence when it learned in 2015 that Kogan had provided Cambridge Analytica with the information he had gleaned from 50 million Facebook users. By just asking Cambridge Analytica to certify that it had deleted the data was completely inadequate by Facebook. Facebook has also failed in its responsibility to let all 50 million of those users know that their data had been shared with Cambridge Analytica. Mark Zuckerberg said that the company will now do so. And that's not good. It's been, what, four years since this happened? Facebook has failed its users in many different ways, the main one being privacy. Cambridge Analytica was not a data breach. Cambridge Analytica's use of the personal information of 50 million Facebook users was a privacy breach. Facebook is trying to fix that problem. But I think it's a little too late for the giant social media company. All right, so we have seen a lot of uh, data breaches of recent, and uh, as we have seen in the story here today, other stories to cover today, uh, this is an ongoing thing that we'll continue to see. And it's now up to us to ensure that we keep our information protected and um, secure. And also for companies to have the proper regulations in place to, so that they can keep all our information secure as well. From the team here at Worldwind Radio, this is Marcelo Sugdeu saying stay safe in the technology world.